At Learn Electrics, we've often been asked about neutral currents in three phase systems and how they appear to differ from single phase systems. Questions have included In a balanced three phase system, why are there no neutral currents? If we have a neutral current in a single phase installation, then where has it gone in a three phase system? If there is no neutral current, then how do things work? And we will introduce Kirchhoff's laws to show what is happening. You will all be familiar with a typical three phase waveform. Three phases, all 120 degrees apart. Each waveform will have a maximum positive peak and a maximum negative peak. The maximum positive and negative peaks of any phase will never coincide. They will never happen at the same time, either positive or negative. We can never have a maximum red phase and a maximum blue phase at the same moment in time. And for the purposes of this video, we are not going to worry ourselves about peak to peak values or RMS values. In this video, we are keeping things very simple. Each waveform will rise to a maximum value before starting to drop again. We call this maximum the 100% value, or we could just call it the times 1 value, since 100% and times 1 mean the same thing. At another point in time, there are two waveforms that cross at a certain point. They are both at 50% in their waveform cycle, and as 50% is half of 100%, we call this the times 0 0.5 value. If we have a single phase supply, we must have a neutral. With three phase, we sometimes use a neutral, and at other times, a neutral is not required. Here, there are two waveforms at the negative 50% point, or minus times 0.5. And the different example, at this point in time, shown by the orange line, the red phase is at the zero point, the green is at plus times 0.866, and the blue is showing minus 0.866. What the numbers do will make sense very soon. If we start with a single phase, we can look at what happens to currents in equipment. Let's take a simple single phase circuit with a 4 amp or 1 kilowatt room heater. We know that 4 amps will flow along the single phase line conductor, in this case probably through the plug. The energised current will pass through the heater elements, making them hot. Having given up its energy in making the room warm, the current then flows back along the neutral conductor to the plug and back to the consumer unit. Now imagine this as alternating current. It is changing direction 50 times a second. Parts of the circuit are going positive, negative, positive, negative, far too quick for us to see. Sometimes the top of the heater is the positive end, sometimes the bottom. It doesn't matter to us, and as it's all single phase, it makes no difference to the circuit. In about 1850, a scientist called Gustav Kirchhoff formulated an electrical law that has become known as Kirchhoff's current law. Long before we had multimeters and multifunction testers, he was able to tell us that the algebraic sum of all the currents flowing into and out of a node must equal zero. In other words, what flows in must flow out. They are always equal and opposite. If 4 amps flows into an appliance, then 4 amps must flow out. We can show it on this simple sketch. 4 amps in and 4 amps out. Result, zero. Or, we can say plus 4 amps and minus 4 amps is zero. It doesn't matter what flows in and from where. What flows out will always be the same. Any positive values will always be exactly matched by negative values. The mathematical and electrical sum of everything at a point is always zero. We can add another 4 amp heater to our single phase circuit. If 4 amps flows into each heater, 8 amps must flow along the line conductor. And if 8 amps flows through the two heaters, then 8 amps must flow along the neutral. Now add a third heater. 12 amps on the line conductor, 4 amps through each of the three heaters, 
and 12 amps back along the neutral. How would Kirchhoff draw this? Three lots of 4 amps in and one lot of 12 amps out. That was single phase and Kirchhoff's law works just the same with three phase. Moving on to three phase circuits, let's see what happens and why the neutral currents seem to disappear. We can keep the same 4 amp heaters, one for each phase, and remember that L1, L2 and L3 will not be in phase with each other. They will be 120 degrees apart electrically. Some currents will be going in a positive direction and some going in a negative direction. We can make the neutrals the same electrical point and this is exactly what happens at the distribution board but all the neutrals meet at the neutral bar. But we must never ever allow L1 or L2 or L3 to come into contact with each other. What happens at the line conductors? What is switched on or switched off on an individual basis? And whether the current flow is positive or negative and what part of the phase each waveform is in compared to the others will affect the current flowing at the neutral. They will be added or subtracted together. We can plot this by using a thing called multiplication factors. Knowing where each of the waveforms is compared to the other waveforms will give us some mathematical number to use, a value for the current that is flowing. These numbers or factors tell us by how much to multiply the different currents in the circuit. And this will tell us the effect they are having on the circuit at a particular moment in time. Let's look at this in practice. We have a three phase waveform and the lilac coloured line shows the point at which we are measuring. In this case, it is when L1 is at zero degrees, when the red line crosses the black central zero line in a positive direction. And we must also look at what is happening to the other two waveforms at the same time. When L1 is zero, the multiplication factor for L1 is zero. L2, the green, is different. It is at minus times 0.866. And L3, the blue, is plus times 0.866. And we can write this in the grid. Moving on a little bit, a few fractions of a second later, the line at the bar is at 90 degrees for L1, and L1 is at a maximum, a value of 100%, or plus 1. The red and blue are both negative, and are sat at minus times 0.5 for each. And these numbers can also be entered into the grid. At 180 degrees, things have changed again, as shown. I think you've got the idea now. And at 210 degrees, a different picture again. And we've completed the grid numbering for you. Shown here is a completed table to give you an idea of what is going on. As we are using the same 4 amp heaters, the multiplication factors have been applied to the 4 amp neutral currents already. If we take that table, and add up all the neutral currents, what do we get? At zero degrees, there is current flowing in L2 and L3, but they are equal and opposite, so cancel each other out. Net result, zero amps. At 90 degrees, all three phases have an effect, but still add up to zero. Different numbers at 180 degrees, but still zero amps. And then at 210 degrees, Different values again, but mathematically all at zero. Because we are using the same size heater, 4 amps, on every phase, the circuit is balanced. The effective neutral current in total, measured at any part of the phase, is zero amps. But what happens to the neutral current if something else is added to just one of the phases? We know what happens to the neutral current in a three phase circuit if each incoming phase is the same number of amps. The neutral current is effectively zero and the phases are balanced. But what happens if we add an extra two amp load to just one phase, let's say L1, so that L1 becomes six amps, L2 stays at four amps and L3 is four amps also. Now we will start to see non-zero results because the system is unbalanced and this is exactly what happens in normal situations. We never have a perfectly balanced world. As equipment is turned on and off during the day, 
different neutral currents will flow. Another heater is turned on, the kettle is used, the compressor is turned on, etc. So here we have just one phase, a little more loaded than the others. Using our table, we can see what effect this has on the neutral currents. As shown here, the imbalance at 90 degrees is 2 amps, and at 210 degrees it is 1 amp. The current variations are just noticeable, and considering that this is with 14 amps total current down the three line conductors, this is not a problem for day-to-day -day activities. Now we can make the current difference in L1 quite significant. Let's assume that the electrician has connected pretty much everything into the L1 terminals. We have 40 amps along L1 and just 4 amps along L2 and L3. Look at the results in the neutral this time. Kirchhoff's law tells us that at part of the cycle there are up to 36 amps of neutral current flowing into or out of the neutral bar. Although not dangerous in this example, it does serve to show what can happen. In a small industrial unit, this might not be a great problem, but in large industrial plants, it is essential that knowing where electrical loads are applied and to which phases is essential for properly balanced installations, and some large users buy expensive equipment to automatically track and adjust this. We can look at balancing three-phase systems in another video and make some suggestions on how to keep smaller three-phase units in better balance. And why don't we see this effect in single-phase circuits? That is because there is only one current of interest to us. That single current, that single phase, has its own line and its own neutral conductors. In a three-phase system, each line is separate, but they all use the same common neutral conductor to return to the supply. It is the currents in that common neutral bar that add and subtract together. And that is why your equipment still functions, even though your meter is telling you that the neutral current is zero. The current is there, but it is being balanced out by Kirchhoff's law. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated. And we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.